You hungry? Well, I'm hungry. You like baseball? Well, I love that shit. Want a slice of pizza? Go to New York. You want hot weather? Come to LA. You wanna break bread? Call Nick the Toro. Ready, motherfucker? Are you ready? Well, I'm fucking ready. Get ready! Oh, stress. You see this shit? Here we go. I'm wearing this, this stupid hat that I got on the beach in Cabo. Look at this ridiculous Yankee hat. I almost broke it last night trying to hit a fly in the air. And they're like, don't do that. Don't do it. You're going to break the hat. I broke part of the hat. Who the fuck cares? And all right, enough of this fucking hat. I'm taking it off, all right? I'm going on the DL. I pulled the fucking muscle in my sleep. I got to get a little R&R. &R. I may give Robert Kraft a call, get that masseuse that I need. So, you know... Sal, just rub it out, would you? Give me a karate chop, Sal. Just come on, let's finish with a car harder. Come on, Sal. Rub it out, Sal. Go ahead, rub it out. Rub it out. Yeah. I get up out of the bed and I go to the bathroom. He fell down. No, I couldn't get <laughs> off the fucking toilet bowl. I couldn't almost wipe my ass. I had to wipe from the front because I was spasming. Oh, you laugh. This is a true story. Then I tried to get up and I couldn't. I was on the ground in the fucking bathroom. Did I help you? You didn't do shit. Motherfucker left me for dead. I ordered a fucking hot dog and it was a foot long hot dog. Disgusting. I had a sabret on the street. I was in Brooklyn. I had a sabret on the street, which is a great hot dog. Now, sabret, you can't even get him out here, but it's mustard and sauerkraut. It's a fucking great dog. And ketchup. No ketchup. Ketchup is for the hamburger. That's bullshit. And ketchup. No. Anyway, I see they got sabret hot dogs. So I didn't know they were foot long dogs. I don't like a foot long dog. It's too big. It's like almost, a, I hate to say it, it's like I want a regular sized penis, all right? <laughs> I don't want a big penis. I don't. I really don't. You know what I mean? It's, I had to break the penis in half. I'm sorry, but I had to. I mean, I couldn't even enjoy the hot dog. Just give me a regular hot dog. I thought it was a good hot I dog. Don't, I don't want a huge, a fat hot dog. I don't want a long hot dog. I want a thin hot dog with mustard sauerkraut. Fuck me up, man. We had a great scene in the park one day. Fucking when I was eating a sandwich, telling you about a good guy and a bad guy it was great. I'll tell you what I became comfortable doing on that show with you was eating. You would just go around the corner and you have a beer and a pizza and they'd be right. looking for you. Right, have a fucking beer remember and that? pizza. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, where's Nick? Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, we're like, we're doing a scene. And the PA goes in, they went like a block and a half down we're in East Village and you, the Yankees game was on. And you went in and you just like a moth to the flame and you order the pizza and a beer. You're watching the game. You're like, Nick, what are you doing? Right. And you're like, you're like Yankees game. You're like, we're shooting a scene, Nick. What are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? You're like, yeah, but the game. I know. That's my motivation. Oh, my God. Uh, this fucking ruined it, this fucking thing. Red the Bull. Red Bull? Oh, my God. Put, the, put your dick on the table. Go straight with the no. vodka in. Yeah, fuck that. Here. There we pour go. This in that, pour that fucking thing. Bring me on. Bring me that thing back. Your glass. What, I'll my pour glass? It, I'll pour it in here. There we go. I don't want this fucking Red Bull. That's horrible. <laughs> Let's put the fucking Tito's vodka right here. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Who the I fuck know. I started watching um, King of Queens, whatever it was. King of Queens is a good show. I wound up but, working for him a lot because of, I met him in that movie. And then I was cooking sauce. I make this great red sauce. And I made it for Adam one day and fucking Kevin drank it. I'm like, what are you drinking? He goes, oh, oh, fuck. I go, he goes, I, I was drinking the sauce. Who made that? I'm not a pen guy. I'm not an herb guy. I'm not a Chiba guy. Yeah. I'm not a fucking. Fuck <laughs> I'm not a pot guy. I, I I had a bad experience with a bong when I was a kid. I That's did. different. That's a totally different thing. Listen, I don't smoke bongs. Now, I'm gonna tell you a true story. I took a hit of a bong in Long Island when I was a kid. Let me see if I can. You guys can follow me. So I go like, hey Nick, 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 you know, try it, right? I don't really want to try it. I'm kind of innocent, so I just go whatever the bong yeah. is. And this is what happened to me, Ben. I'm not bullshit, no way. Oh, motherfuckers! What's up, Nick? What's wrong? I said, nothing. I can't get up. I'm walking around for three days like this. <laughs> walking like this. I had a party at my parents' house, and I, the whole party, I'm walking like this. They go, Nick, what's wrong with Nick? I go, he took a bong hit. You can't, you can't stand up. Somehow the fucking bong got stuck here, and it wouldn't release. That's bullshit. It, it's not bullshit. Tell me it's fucking bullshit. I lived it. You never lived it. I 
lived it. I love going to the valley for massages. I've yeah. always gone. In high school, I'd go. Get worked over good. Full body massage. Full body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking clean stuff now, right? You say massage right away, they make it a bad right. thing. I'm good at it too. I mean, not that I do men, but I'm, 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 I'm good at it. I get in deep. Some people, it's in their hands, you know? Yeah, it is. It's like, like sometimes, a gift. you know, like you get some people that beat the shit out of you and right. like, All right. that ain't a massage. <laughs> like people punching yeah. me, you know, one time I was in Seattle and they had one of these, I'm married to a Filipino and one of these Filipino friends or relatives. She was like a third aunt. Yeah, or she okay. chopped me like in a place where, you know, she hit a muscle. Yeah. I oh. fought it right in her face. I didn't mean to. I was like, Pfft. and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. She was laughing. She kept going. That was a trigger, yeah, yeah, but I'm like, you know, there's a muscle there. I hired Joey. I met him at the Comedy Underground and I hired him. He Where's the Comedy Underground? He was in Seattle, my favorite place ever, but... Uh, you uh, met Coco there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he uh, he was like, I need a fucking job. You can hook me up with a fucking job. And I go, yeah, What on. was he doing in Seattle? He had moved there with his girlfriend oh. to start doing stand-up, right? <laughs> I got a fucking job. Can I need a fucking job, right? And so I go, yeah, man, come down. You want to you wanna work the door at my club? And he was like, that'd be great. So on Is he working the door? Yeah, on Tuesday nights. <laughs> that's like, that could be a comedy. Well, I have so many Joe Diaz stories. Two old gay guys, and they were dressed <laughs> like they were in Gone with the Wind, and they had the, their parasols and everything. <laughs> and uh, they started arguing with each other. And I told Joey, I'm like, hey, they're getting a little loud. You're going to have to kick these guys out. And so Joe's coming up, and he was younger. You know, when I met him, he was 220 pounds. The baby Coco. He wore right. a three-piece suit on stage. Did he? Oh, my God. Okay. And he was a, That's hilarious. He was a bull. He would pace the stage. It was intimidating. He had an energy to him at he that time. He is kind of intimidating. He's calmed down a bunch. Yeah. He's calmed down yeah. a bunch. But so he starts, he's like, oh, you two, we got we to get out of here. And he grabs them both by the elbows. And um, he's like, you got to, we're walking out together. And they were like, let go of us. And he was like, I'm sorry, I got to walk you out. They started to hit him with their parasols. Bap, bap, you know those little umbrellas? They're hitting Coco? Yeah. Bap, bap, let go of us. Bap. And all I hear him is like, he's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that laugh he's yeah, got, right? Yeah, he's laughing because yeah. these two, yeah. he was like, I can't believe you two old queens are beating me up on the umbrellas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and he oh just walked him God. out. Yo, if, if you ask any of my kids, who was your babysitter when you were growing up? They would say Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz. From Jacob, uh, outside of me. Was he still Joey Coco Diaz? No, he was Joey oh. Diaz. When did Coco come? It was For a while, it was the King of Swing. Oh. Uh, What's the King of Swing? That's just what Oh. Joey, the King oh. of Swing, Joey Diaz. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Coco, he, he was, because Coco was his nickname when he was younger, so I heard it a bunch of times, but I didn't hear it quite as much. But, uh, yo, he... So he had three-piece suit? Three-piece suit. Do you have any pictures of that? I have maybe one or two. Oh, man. Um, his, he babysat Jacob. J he was the only other person in the world, not my ex, not any of my brothers, not my mom, not my dad, who, when Jacob was crying, could put him to sleep. Me and Joey. Wow. But Joey had different... I comforted him. Right. Joey basically smothered him. Really? He would hold him real tight. Real tight? And he wouldn't let him squirt, squir and he would just hold him. And he would always do this. He would snap his fingers, he'd go, turn on Sublime. And we'd turn on a Sublime album <laughs> and we'd crank it up real loud so it was like Clockwork Orange. It was like information overload and it, he was hot and he would hold him real tight and he would just, Jacob would struggle for a little while, maybe a he minute, minute like and a half. Him, put him out in a... Almost like, like a sleeper hole. Like almost a sleeper yeah, hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, he was squeezing <laughs> yeah. the breath out of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But, and he would put him to sleep. Wow. Joe... And I had a deal, like, so he would come over when I needed to go do my sets, and he would just come over and watch the kids for like half an hour. My, he was like, all you gotta do is pay me in food. And on Tuesday nights, we did this fetish night. And fetish night? Fetish night. Yeah. And so just, it was, they didn't drink, but I could charge them $50 at the door. Right. Because they just wanted a place to come in, not be judged, wear their dresses, wear whatever, you know. What was the fetish? Around. Toes? Anything they wanted. They Guys walked around with dog leashes. People got candles burned on them. I, I, there was one crazy room downstairs. You ready for this, man? So you had to pay, I actually think it was $35 to get in, but it was 50 to get into the room downstairs where weird shit happened. And so there was one part of the weird shit room, which, which there was upstairs, downstairs, where there were guys who laid under glass tables and paid money to watch women dump through the glass table on top of them. Oh my God. Right? So. That's too much. Yeah, for me too, by yeah. the way. Like, I ain't watching nobody take no, a shit. 
<laughs> I've had enough shit stories in my life. You know, so there was too much pressure. pressure. There was too much pressure. But you know, like in fighting as well, you get used to that stuff, right? right. In Holland, I always explain it with driving a car. In Holland, you have to pass with a stick shift. Right. You have to. No, the first time you drive a shift stick, you go like, what the heck sure. is going on, you know? Where's the clutch? Yeah, now right. they're uh, in Holland, they're rolling a joint, they're drinking a coffee, <laughs> they're doing everything. They're on the interview, they're on the phone, and whatnot. you do everything because you get used to it. And it's right. like fighting the same thing. Where did you go to open mic? A place called uh, Natural Fudge on Fountain Avenue, the Natural Fudge Theater. It was hosted by um, Johnny, Johnny, with his name, Johnny, the an old guy. Dude, I didn't have cable. I didn't grow up with cable. So what was your act? What did it, it consist of? Oh, man. Of? What's the open mic? A couple of minutes? Like a couple, four three minutes? minutes. Three minutes? That's what I heard. I didn't know. I didn't. I don't know shit, bro. I didn't know what local access was. Right. Local access cable. So when you came out, what did you do? Like, what? Because I, oh, I, I mean, up, I, I want to hear. Because I'm. First of all, I didn't know how to. I, I thought you had to dress like a comedian, bro. Well, how does a comedian bro, I dress? Like, like Fosse Bear from the Muppets, bro. I thought. Like who? Fosse Bear. Shy, shy, shy. You know that that bear that oh, always says jokes. Okay. So he wears a hat like yours, but he wears a, a sports coat and a right. tie like a comedian, like a hacking comedian. Right. A little flower that squirts right. water. So I wrote a, I, I, I didn't have a tie, bro. So I, I, I found out. You didn't a, wear a tie, did you? I wanted to. And you I wanted did? to wear a, a suit with the patches, bro, like Mark Pitta. You know, the, the Did you wear a sport coat? I did. I found one. And then I found, I didn't find a tie, but I went to his thrift store. He goes, you have any ties? We have these. But they were all bolos, bro. I didn't want a bolo. But they were all, so I a wore a, a cowboy bolo. Oh, okay. Like the little yeah, Johnny, yeah, Johnny yeah. Redcorn thing. Yeah. Did you wear so that? I wore that. I wear my sports coat. I wear my jeans, and I went up on stage. What would you and, say? What's your first line? Um, hey, I started making fun of the people in the audience, audience hey, first. I said, well, "I said, look at this black guy right here, man. He he he's dressed them like all in black. He's he's the first black Amish guy. He has, <laughs> he's a, I mean, most black people are Amish. They have no lights. They have no electricity. There's no food." <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, were they laughing? They were laughing, and then. Um, but did you plan that? Did you plan? I didn't to say plan a, that joke. You didn't plan to pick on a black guy no, in the audience. No, I didn't. But I had a joke. What was your? I, I, how remember, were you? I don't remember what the jokes I said. I just know. Did these, you have jokes or did you have stories? I had jokes. I'm just curious. Jokes that were not funny. That weren't funny. My first joke was this. But it corny, right? Horny, bro. I said, "You guys see that movie, The Last of the Mohicans? I'm in a new, new movie called The Last of the Mojados." <laughs> Translate and everybody laughed because they knew that mojado means wetbacks. And then um, was it Mexican audience? No, they were they were like um, right? hipsters. Hipsters. Yeah. yeah. And then I said, uh, what did I say? I said, um, did my impersonation of Romeo, Romeo and Juliet in the projects. Maria, let down your purse. I need some crack. <laughs> <laughs> then everybody laughed. And they laughed. Yeah. And then the Mooney twins. Paul Mooney's kids went up there, and right. then they kind of made fun of me in a nice way, and I became real popular in the in next room. Oh, so like in, a, in an endearing way. In an endearing way. They give it up for Paul Rodriguez's brother. Bro, mm -hmm. Paul Rodriguez's son. He's trying to get his whole family in the fitness. Yeah. Well, so that was, so was cool, man. So Johnny Roberts, the owner, goes, hey, kid, that was very funny. You want to come back next week? We're going to shoot a comedy show for, for television. So I said, whoa, already? Television? <laughs> I felt like, damn, all right. So I was there, right? And we were eating breakfast, and guess who's sitting right behind my friend? No other than Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. Wow. And he's sitting there eating breakfast. And I'm nervous as hell, so was my friend. So he just say, hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, what's up? Hey, how you guys doing? And I, <laughs> I, 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 sh I shook his hand, and I, I said the wrong thing. The first thing that came to my mind, I should have thought about it. When I was a little boy, I saw Bob Welch strike you out in the World Series. You said that to him? I, I said that to him, bro. And then he, he moved my hand away like, all right, thank you. And then uh, my friend said, but you came back the next day and hit three home runs. And then he, he looked at my friend. I know what I did. Tell your friend that. You know, that's not the way you want to introduce I yourself. I was wrong, man. That's like somebody walking up to me and goes, sure. hey, Felipe Esparza, remember me? I'm Sarah's sister. Remember she gave her, you gave her crabs? <laughs> They're still itchy. You are the epitome of a New York baseball fan. I can only imagine. If I was Mike, I'd be scared shitless. Knowing if I saw your shit on, in, on Instagram, I'm like, oh my God. You think they pay attention to me? You were the official hype man for the playoffs last year. <laughs> 
<laughs> was game four of the playoffs last year is this guy, two minute spot on Fox Sports. This is the Bronx, baby. <laughs> this is baseball. <laughs> but I'm not the president. What am I gonna do? You should be I'm president. just a fan. I should be the president. I should be like a, I should be like a guy who's like, you know, baseball hires me. President of the fans. President of the fans. President of, of the Let's people. Get it running. Right. Let me let me run shit. You know, give me a position. Give me a job. Trust me, the money will be well worth it. I'm ready to do the job. I've been waiting. I remember like the ninety five season, I remember like I, will, I remember thinking like I watched like I think I watched like every Yankees game. You know what I'm saying? Like because ninety four had been a strike year. Strike year. Yep. And ninety three, we had lost. We had 93. lost the pennant. We had lost the, the AL East to the Blue Jays by like a few games. You know, we were in the race all the way to September. They were coming. So I'm back thinking, like, yeah. man, you know, and the Blue Jays won the World Series. They were just too damn good. Ninety four, they would have, they would have so won 94, the division. So ninety four, they were winning the division, yeah. and they go on the strike. It was yeah. the, the Yankees and the Expos. You know, that's right. So I'm thinking, like, fun. man, like, okay, so ninety five, I was kind of pumped up for the season. I remember, like, thinking, you know, I watched like every game. I was on it like every game. My mother would send me to sleep on school nights. I put on WABC on the radio with John Sterling and put the. <laughs> I had a clock. Clock radio in my room and I put under Clock my pillow. Radio, I know. And I put under my pillow and I listened right. to the Yankee game as I went to sleep. And you appreciated it. Yeah. There's nothing like uh, baseball in the radio. And plus the Yankees in, the, in my life at the time I hadn't won anything. You know what I mean? Not Before that we hadn't won it since '77. So I'm finally seeing a good Yankees team because you have to understand when I came from Italy and my, my uncle's 17, 18 years. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah, the Yankees were horrible. You know, so <laughs> so. They're getting good, and '95 they they're, they they're, they're right. They had the you know, heartbreak they had loss the, to the Mariners. Yo, bro. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They win this. They get the wild card, which is yeah. like the first ever year for the wild card. Yeah. And what a series! They win Fantastic. the first two games in New York. In New York, the Lakers well, 15 and three home heartbreakers run. in the kingdom. Well, three heartbreakers. I remember game five. Jack McDowell comes in as a as yep. a as a reliever. In, in relief. David Cohn. They David were bringing everybody. They couldn't. Well, David Cohn threw a lot of pitches. <laughs> yeah. And I remember yeah. when the shot went to the gap and Griffey's flying from first. You know, and I'm like, score. oh man, it looks like no. That was, was their two world, that was their world series. Because they're sending them. It's two yeah, outs. They were sending them. And then what happened? And the Mariners get beat by the Indians. And yeah, the, and the <laughs> AL, that was their World Series, AL beating CS, the Yankees. Yeah. And man, Randy Johnson was tough that year, man. He was a so beast. I remember, I didn't want to play the Mariners. Oh, that's good. You remember I remember, very well. you know, 95, I remember very well. Then 96, you remember said, 96 yeah, I, very well? I followed all those years. All yeah. those years I followed. Because 95, we got to remember one thing, too. The, the the Mariners and the Angels had to play one game playoff. That's right. So I didn't want to play the Mariners game. because of Randy Johnson. Because of so Randy I was Johnson. rooting for the Angels, yeah, and they true. had that one game playoff where Randy smoked the Angels. I think they won like nine nothing or something. Yeah. And like that gave us the Mariners. So I'm like, man, well, I gotta deal with this. Well, what was the big hit in '96? I'm sure you know that one. The 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 Car the, the Tony Tarasco. <laughs> the, well, that was a big. The, hit, but what was the, the big hit in the, the whole series? Run. Oh, uh, later it's the yeah, whole run off of, Jimmy uh, King. off Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, it was the ALCS when. No, and then the kid oh, the caught kid. the ball. What's the fucking kid's name? <laughs> but Tony Tarasco was the outfielder, yeah, I think. He wouldn't have caught it. He wouldn't have caught it. But that caught was it. a big debate, you know? Because he didn't jump the yeah. fucking guy. Yep. So the kid, and the kid, the kid guided the ball yep. into the stands. Yep. yep. What was his name? Uh, I don't know, but he was what an adult. Now. I don't know. They had him in a, I had him in a, How could I forget his name? Jeffrey Mayer. What the yeah. fuck is wrong with Jeffrey Mayer is like 30 years old now, mind you. He's a star. Jeter goes, Jeter's so cool. He was like, Elvis yeah, Jeter was a rookie too. He goes, you should have jumped, man. Jeter <laughs> goes, you should have jumped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was great. Anyway. But the Wallace home run was, the, the, the Larry's home run off Wallace was crazy too. Oh, it was because Rogers put us in a 6 nothing hole, six then the bullpen and comes bomb. in a little by little with clawing, 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 and then Larry's a 3 1 home run. I know. And I remember Andrew Jones climbs the wall, almost yeah. catches that ball. He gave me a heart attack. I know. <laughs> Strawberries did good in that game. Yeah. And then yep. the next game, they won one nothing. Yep. Andy Pettit. Yep. And I was in New York doing exteriors with NYPD Blue. So I saw game one and two. Game one, we got blown out. Yeah. Andrew and the game one was 12 1, and 12 game one, two was 4 0. 4 0. Yeah. Wow. Great memory. And then three, four, and five, I watched in the region. And we I'm called talking. them all out. We yep. called all oh, them out. So you're like, man, I can't believe we won three in a row. And by the end of the week, I had no voice. I was like that. I know. And even game six. I was filming on it. Right? And even game and even what are you saying? Like, oh, and nothing's coming out. And even game six, Welland gives up I a run there. in the ninth inning. Welland gave up a run in the ninth inning. So you're like, the oh, game. man, they're going to blow it. Like, Welland, oh. Welland was a good closer, but he wasn't Rivera. The you know what I mean? fucking cops took me on the field. They took me <laughs> in the locker room. The, I was surreal. I was like, because I was All on right. NYPD Blue, and I was like, this kid. I'm like, it was like a dream for me. Like, you know, you like yeah. your dreams. And I was like, wow, how the fuck did I get? Because I'd done commercials with Boggs and these guys, and they were like, yeah, yeah, bring him on the field. I was like, I couldn't believe it. My mother was there, my wife. Yeah, I was running and, the streets of Bensonhurst after we won oh the World Series. I was going crazy. That was a great time in my life. Yeah. NYPD Blue. And that was my wife. Fuck, man, I'm on a series of Yankees. <laughs> hey, that, that, my life is over after that. That's it. Like that was the that was like the best year of my life. 
fuck, man. Sometimes you just go, that's it. After that, it was <laughs> it's all going downhill. downhill. Well, the Yankees want That's wanna, it. The Yankees yeah, but at least I had that fucking high note. Yeah, the Yankees want a good one. You know one, what I mean? I'm, I'm looking for, you know, to reinvent myself somehow. <laughs> At that next fucking feeling again. <laughs> Have you ever been with an actor that doesn't break character? Yeah. No. Can you imagine? No. No, that's weird. Imagine you're by the craft service. <laughs> yeah, and the guys don't you, got... you, 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 you President you, Lincoln still? What would you say? Would you bust his balls? Bust his balls. You would, right? Because, Nick, we have three hours before the shot. Right. So we, we're here eating. What would you say to him? The, the shot's in three hours. So, you, so I'd say, yo, we got three hours. But what, are you go, you, what would you say to him? What are we doing? What are you doing, man? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Calm down. I've never seen it. Did you ever meet him? I never seen Dan no, I never met Daniel. I've never been with an actor who wouldn't break character either. Who's the biggest movie star you worked with? Biggest movie. Will star. Smith. He worked to with De Niro. Him. Right. Um Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. But he uh. was this was before he was like super duper duper. Right. So he was he was like popping, but he wasn't like Now you had some fucking legendary like, you know, that's a fucking that that what was that? True romance. True romance. That's True fucking romance. huge. Christopher Walken was in yes. that. Yes. That is a fucking good movie. He's a, he talk about a, a unique energy. Very unique. He's a freak. He's a heavyweight. He's a heavyweight. And he's a he's a sweet guy, but total but, Queens guy. But he's fucking. He's just eccentric. He's, but he's so unique. But have you Isn't ever it? spent time with him? I did. I was in a movie with him once. Were you cracking up with I'm him? Dying. I loved him. He and has and he has a good sense of humor. He does. Funny. Oh, did you play a comedian? Yeah, yeah. And that was my first time ever doing like stand up comedy type situation. Like, I love watching stand up comedy. You know, like did route. you do it in the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. I did. Um, I probably did a stand-up piece every episode, if not every other episode. But it was written for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they asked, um, "How do you feel about this and that?" And I was like, "I'm, I'm cool with it, but let me give it a little bit of, uh, you know." Right. And that would just be me, you know, using slang to say certain words or like. But our writers, like, they were amazing. How did on you that film show. it? Did you film it like in a? In a comedy club, were you like in front of an audience or? Well, they built one. They built it. Um, they built the Goldies, which is the club that we use, right? And it's based off of the comedy store um, because the entire story is based off of Jim Carrey, his rise to who he is now as mm -hmm. a stand-up comedian. Was he involved? Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote, and well, I think he wrote the some of the show. I'm not sure. I don't want to put out information that I don't know for solid you know, terms, but... but I mean, he had a hand in yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on set a lot um, first season uh, before he started shooting his new show right now, which is so fucking crazy because it's amazing. Is that another Showtime show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that called? Uh, faking it, right? I'm just kidding. Oh, kidding. Oh, uh, are, you, are you kidding or something? I don't... Just kidding. Just, just kidding. kidding. Yeah, okay, kidding. just kidding. Yeah. Faking I, it. Oh, I watched Faking It yesterday. That's why it popped in my head. Yeah. But yeah, Jim has a new show and I, I seen... I watched like... The first two episodes of it, and my friend Ginger is in it also. And I was just like, holy shit, that is Jim Carrey back at it again like he never lost it. Like, mm -hmm. it's the same crazy Jim that we love from me, myself, and Irene, or right. from like Fun with Dick and Jane, or like, you know. What's his energy like? Great? Yeah, it's, and, and, but the thing is, it's not fake great. You no, know no, how it's some people. Real. Real it's great. so real, like right. it's, it's stuff no, it's that genuine. Yeah, so genuine, man. Right. Like some stuff that. But people you can feel, feel his enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. And you he know. seems like a guy that's like supportive. Yeah. Of other people, other yeah. talent. I mean, from from afar, from what I've seen of him, I just I love the guy, but I like mm -hmm. that he feels like a guy that. No, it is. He, it is. He he likes people. It is. He does not. The thing about Jim Wright. You know how they say, don't judge a book by its cover? Right. The weirder your cover, the more interested Jim is in supporting you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's that lovely of a person. It's kind of, of the brilliance person. of him, right? Exactly. It's like, he knows that his book cover isn't perfect. How many a... episodes did you do? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what did we do, 10 episodes? You did 10? I think it was 10. Was it what? 10? Did you do a second season? Uh, yeah, we did season one, season two. It says um, you did 20. So you did Oh, 20. yeah. Yeah, 10 Were you, uh, 10 were you in all 20? Yeah. Damn. And you worked with my old friend Dave Flabot? Yeah, Dave's the shit. Dave is the shit. Dave is the shit. Yeah, Dave is uh, he's a guy from Boston who, who wrote a pilot for me years ago that we almost got on the air. Which one? The CW? First or the one, CW, WB. Yeah. WB, yeah. yeah. Oh, WB, yeah. yeah. And um, I met him. I was going around first time I ever developed a pilot. And I just met the guy and we hit it off. And he goes, you want to see anything I wrote? I said, no, no. I said, I told the guys, the studio, he's the guy. 
He goes, how do you know? I said, I know, because I just met the guy and we just connected as people, yeah, you yeah. know, and he's, he's got a good soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he could write. He's a very talented writer. Yeah, I, I was always excited, man, like, to go to table reads, I wouldn't, I didn't, I wouldn't read the script in my email. You know how you get them all the time. Right, because you I wanted to discover it. I want to discover that at shit the table. at the table, man. Because yeah. I knew that Dave would always have something that's like, hey, yo, Adam, this is going to be this. Oh, that's so sweet. Like when the second season, yeah. I got a girlfriend, right? Oh, yeah. But she was nowhere near my age. Yeah. I that's the, that's me. The as WB a, show I did with Dave, I gave him the story, I gave him the characters, and I said, go off and write it. And he fucking nailed it. To this day, I still have that script. Nick, it's a great script. I mean, the audience went wild. It was one of the best tapings they said they had ever had. And for whatever reason, demographics. But he fucking knocked it out of the park. Like, sometimes, you know, you'll give a guy an idea, writers, and then you get it back and you go, that's... I need some alterations. Yeah, I got to get yeah, involved yeah, yeah. in it. Like, they don't have the voices. They don't have the essence of... Like, you, know, you might have a story and say, hey, this is RJ. And then you give it to a guy and he can execute it yeah. in a way that you go, oh, shit, this guy really yeah, got like, it. Damn, that's and, actually and, RJ. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or I mean, but the voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? The tone of it. Yeah. The fucking cadence of it. He nailed it. So um, I, I think I may have went in for that show just early on and it seemed like an interesting I didn't quite see all the episodes, but it, uh, was it a great experience? Or what? Oh, it was, was crazy. Was your first great. time being on a series, or well, my first time being on a uh, uh, a season regular. A regular, I guess you say. right? Because yeah, you're we, a series regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, but they put you through. They put you through a lot, or you just well, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot, but they definitely showed me like the tough love of stand up comedy. You know, I wanted the rawness of what it would feel like to so be a stand up. So when you say comedy. they showed you the tough love, or mm. the, tell me, tell me what that is about. So they don't laugh at bullshit ass jokes. Like the other stand up comedians that's on set, right? They'll let you know either that's funny or it's not because we're trying to create a show. You know what I'm saying? Your feelings and all that extra shit. They got to get the fuck on because right. these are people who know what they're talking about. They do this like it's like questioning Eric Griffin on if this is funny. Right. Hey Eric, you're not that. That's not. I wouldn't do that. It's first of all, it's not my 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 area of expertise. So anybody above me, anybody into it, I don't give a fuck if you're a, 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 a chaperone of a. I'm a I'm a I'm a listen. You know. Right. So the whole time we would be on set, sometimes Eric would come to me and he would watch a um, a, a take or something. You know, and be like. Hey, yo, so if you do it like this, no, like last take was real good. It was real good. But let's make it believable. Or he'll, you know, Who's drop Eric? that nut. Eric Griffin. He, um, he's a stand-up comedy, uh, comedian, excuse so me. So is he like a consultant? In, in the show or, or uh, you mean just in yeah, life? in the show. Oh, in the show, he was almost like my big brother. You know, oh, okay. Ralphie, Ralphie was my big brother in the show practically. Uh, oh, okay. Him and Adam had a lot of, lot of fights and button heads because Ralph is... Practically the only good black comic in Goldie's that is constantly there, other than oh, Richard Pryor who okay. will come in and you know. And, and so, what were you, the young guy? Yeah, young, kid? young whippersnapper, man. Whippersnapper, and I didn't want to listen. Kind of raw. Yeah, I didn't want to listen to shit. And no, he, he couldn't tell me shit until he showed me shit. You mm -hmm. know, and then we we ended up creating this bond on the TV show. Like I, I the, till this day, if Ralph and Art and, and Adam could have a show together, I would like. Man, I drop everything I'm doing because it, it's just like that camaraderie of not even just being just able to, to be act around like that. that. Yeah, like that, Eric's such a, a fluffy person to be around. Like his spirit is so good. So when it comes to like the critique of your work, you're not taking it to offense, but you also not taking it lightly. You right, know, right. it's like this is what it is. I'm not trying to shit on you. It's but kind of constructive criticism. So fucking, it's like constructive good criticism. But like, right? what would he say? Like. He wouldn't give you like line readings, but what would he give you to say, hey man, that could be, you know, could be funnier, it could be richer. Like just mm -hmm. give me an it, example. So um we had a scene that was between me and him. I was downstairs at the cellar, and it's almost like Adam kind of being the, the cellar meaning the comedy yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, okay. the, the the comedy club cellar. And so I Adam was being just like, this is my stage, this is me, and the people were backing him. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it is. He's funny as shit. We know him. We like him. But it was disrespect totally to Ralph's character, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that scene, we have a little bit of tussle, right? And in my mind, it was like a playful thing of, uh, oh, yeah, I'm just fucking with this older dude, right? But that was also my childishness personally and RJ just being like, oh, okay, this would be that. 
because I totally missed what the scene was missed. You know, looking for. It's looking for those levels. It's not just all right. funny right now. Right now, he's kind of showing you his heart. You know, right. look at that, right? And so Eric came to him. He was like, "Hey, try this switch to where you just this one not funny. It's, it's funny to the audience, but right. to but, you but and me, you. we know what's up. You right. know, right? And I was like, word, right? And that's what's on TV right now. You know, that's what's in the episode. His note of me taking the situation to like not joking with the crowd. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just noticing that they're just a part of it. If this room was asshole empty, right? Right. And it was just us two. But to you, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not. Yeah, to me, right. it's none of that. And so I didn't even see that as a thing. Sure. I'm thinking, of course, this is TV. Like, it's supposed right. to be fucking... But you didn't you didn't understand the, yeah. the, the levels of I didn't of, understand what the root was. I yeah. didn't know why Dave wrote it. You know? That was the that was yeah, the main that's thing. That's good writing. Yeah. And it was so good to 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 have like somebody like Eric on set and also, you know, the, the other actors, of course, but Eric was more because we had a lot of scenes together, so he was more like involved in it, you yeah. know. It's like, you know, you get a line and you think, okay, here's the line, but it's like, that's the line, but what's really Yeah, what are they saying? What is the line about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then when you start to get that, yeah, you know, then it gets like, then it becomes way deeper than that. Yeah. Then then you're acting. Yeah. You know because then you're like, really the subtext. Yeah. 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 The subtext. Yeah, yeah. And then you're really like, sort of like embody like, oh fuck, now I'm in it. Yeah. Before yeah. I was just like, okay, I'm I'm acting. Yeah. Now I'm not just acting. I'm 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 going deeper. Yeah. Would you want to be a dentist or a doctor? Neither. I know, but if you had a choice. Um, Someone put a gun to your head and said, you got to be a dentist or a doctor. <laughs> Look what a dentist does. Yeah, I'll probably be a doctor. Yeah, I'll be a doctor. Teeth out of your mouth. That's fucked up. Bro, have you smelled halitosis? It's a serious thing. Yeah, I know that. It's a serious thing. It is I, rough. I, I We've all had bad breath. You know, you got to yeah. keep an eye on that shit. Yeah. It's like, I didn't know how to explain to my homie, like, God That's damn. why you gotta get that fucking chewing gum always up ready. Yeah. Cause you don't know, you know, you're like, oh shit, my breath stinks right now. <laughs> I hate that when you go like this. Ah. Oh shit. But you can taste ass on your tongue. Like, if your <laughs> breath stinks, you know that your breath, I'm so sick. We have a moment of real, like, oh my God. listen, if your breath stinks and you say that you don't know your breath, you're lying. No, you're okay? lying. You're you lying. know when it stinks. You know your breath well, A lot of times it's coming from your stomach. It's acid. But that's okay. Put Sorry. a piece of gum in that Get bitch. That Don't talk tech. close to people. Who was the best dancer? Me. You? All yeah. day. Yeah. I still yeah. take them out. Yeah. <laughs> You're amazing. To this huh? day, I, I mean, my whole, if you look on my page, at Taboo, um, you'll see that I embody the art form of dance, and I really want to use my platform to give other dancers, male, female, choreo, b-boys, b-girls, uh, a platform to have a voice uh, to pop culture and to the masses to let them know how important they are to our culture. Fergie had been, Stacy at the time, Stacy Ferguson, was transitioning into being part of our crew. So it was a nat natural transition for her to be on a song called Shut Up. That was the first song that she was on. Um, and she killed that, that hook, the, the chorus. And uh, we put on other songs. And it just became like, she just became family. The chemistry was The like chemistry was dope. It was, she, in, the, in the studio, she was a, a studio rat just like us. She was always there. She was always dancing in the, in the, in the mirror, like looking at herself and like doing all these funny poses, and I'll be like, yo, what are you doing, girl? She's like, oh, I'm practicing, Tab. I'm like, okay, cool, she, at least she's practicing, right. cool. Right. Practice 10,000 more hours, okay? <laughs> and one day, you'll be able to step on stage with the black eyed peas. Ooh, this guy. <laughs> you got good hair, though. My hair? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have good hair. Mm. One thing to Toro's, we ain't going bald. No. I have a hard time getting good haircuts, but this one was a good cut, but I got strong hair. Yeah, you got good hair. I bought, I've bought hair twice. You have? My own hair. I've plucked it and replanted it. It's not bad. No, he did a good job. But I grew up in Canada where the Italians speak Italian. Right. So when they hear the Americans say things like Moulignan, they're like, the fuck is that? It's not even a word. Yeah. Or they'll say mozzarella. Go, it's, it's fucking mozzarella. It's not fucking mozzarella. No, but New York Italians say mozzarella. Yeah. Like, or gabogol. <laughs> no, like, say, like, you know, in Brooklyn, you know, it's calamari, and they yeah. say galama. Yeah. You got the galama, <laughs> which I love when I have a cousin like that, Vinny D. Vinny like, D. Yeah, Vinny D. This is oh, this guy's like a kept man. He's right. not a made man. Yeah. He's kept by like, you know, oh, women. This guy's he's good. He's, he's like good, an but Italian like, pimp. No, he is like an Italian. I love him. He's like my he's like my you know, my my idol. I don't know why. I have a thing for him. 
It's not, you know, it's nothing like gay or nothing. Not a thing. Just, not a thing. It's like man love. Mm. I, I hit mean, him with a bat, though. I don't like that guy. They had a fight when he was a kid playing, mm -hmm. excuse me, fucking. It's on your mic, not mine. I know, look at that. Playing home run derby on the beach in the Jersey Shore. They used to play home run derby. And so he would go like this, choke, choke. And, and he'd get all fucking mad, throw the wiffle ball bat at him. I'm like, Vinny D, he's a kid. Why are you fighting with the kid? So oh, he, he would throw the bat at, at, uh, at my said, cousin. And yeah. And oh, like, Nick, you would throw it. Yeah, yeah but you can't man. throw the bat at him. It's your, it's your, it's your cousin. How old, your, how old were you? Like, uh, from like 9 to 13. Oh, you're an angry fucking single digit <laughs> kid. <laughs> It's all that angry Filipino blood. <laughs> By the anger. He was a fucking sore loser. He always would cheat. Take your whipple ball butt and get out of here. <laughs> New York was cool. New York was we fun. We had a couple pizzas. It was good. Yeah. We had um, Patsy's. Patsy's. The night, night before the Yankee game. Good meal. Good pizza. So a day later. Clams on the half shell. Baked clams. Good meal. Day later. We're like, we got to fly to LA. We're going to go to LA. Can't get a flight, right? And the flights. They said the, the available flight is at 8 p.m. our time. But here, here was the predicament. If we would have got on that flight, we wouldn't have been able to watch the Pacquiao fight. And We don't we want had, to miss the Pacquiao we can't, fight. We, can't we have to watch the fight. Then they said, well, there's a flight to Vegas at 4 p.m. So we say. Let me get the flight to, flight to Vegas. So then I said, text, we, text our boys. Text Chris. We don't whoever. got a hotel room. We don't got tickets. I text my guy. I text my other guy who works for Fox. We land. We land. T we have tickets. I get a message where we got tickets. We got a hotel room. Ba boom. We're all set up. Now here's the problem. The hotel he got, I'm not allowed to go there. He's banned. So that's a true story. So quick story. And I didn't know. He's like, I can't fucking stay there. So I'm banned. A year he ago. He did a dumb thing. So a year ago, listen. Let me Stupid tell the story. Let me tell, let the, tell story. the story. A year ago. I got tonsillectomy huh. surgery, and essentially, you have to be put on pain medication because the pain is intolerable. So you, I did the surgery, and I was on painkillers all week. So my body wasn't adjusted to anything, et cetera. So a week later, they wanted to go to Vegas to like vacation, see her, my mom's brother and his family, whatever. I said to my friend, all right, buddy, if you want to come to Vegas with me, we're only going to hang out. No drinking, no nothing. I'm sick. I can't do anything. I could barely talk. He goes, all right, bro, no problem. He was very sick. So we go, and the whole week, he's begging my dad, take me to fucking Dre's. Bring Come on. Dre's. I want to see the Dre's. girls. I want to dance on girls. This, that. So you're like, all right, whatever. It's like Hoochie City, Dre's. So, so he's, Hoochie City. So oh, he, my God. So I, I'm like, bro, I can't even go. We're not 21. He goes, yeah, but I have a fake. And I'm like, but I'm still not going. That's what you're not understanding. So the last day, we're about to leave. We're about to leave the hotel. And he finally gives in to him. He's like, all right, Blake, I'll take you up to the pool. And my mom's like, well, I don't want. I'm just going to try to go up to My the mom's pool. like, if you're going to go up, then I'll go up. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stay down here alone. And he goes, but I have two fake IDs. I said, look, bro. I said, if your fake ID works for me, then, it'll, then I should then it'll work for you. You had to see this That's thing. how I was thinking. It was bad. And I was, at that point, we gave in because he didn't shut the fuck up about it. So we're like, all right, whatever. So we go, and they look at the ID and they go, this kid. So they pull me aside. And he goes, look, man, it's just my kid. He was just messing around. Yeah, it's just a big deal. Uh, and the guy I'm, says, no, this is serious. So he yeah. calls over the super, the, 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 the main security guy. And he goes, he's laughing, he's a fan of his, and he's laughing. Yeah, he's he goes, a fan of he's mine. like, what's up, buddy? You trying to use like, a fake? Right. I was like, bro, I'm sick. I really don't. I was just trying to go I said, I said, bro, I honestly don't even want to go up. Like, it's, this, it's my buddy who's been annoying the shit out of us. And he goes, he goes I understand. He goes, I, he goes, let me just see if I can get you off. Let me ask my supervisor. Supervisor says, nah, ring him up. So he's standing there. This is 2018. Yeah. And the words he said were, he said, all right, I'm going to read you your rights. Blah, 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 blah. If you step on this property before you are 21, you will be arrested and you will spend the weekend in jail. Or subject and, to a fine. And subject to a fine. Yeah. It's so, a serious shit. So I, I, was, I was like, in my mind, I was like, this is a joke, but like it was serious. And then he said, take your glasses off. So they took my picture, whatever. So he kept, he said, don't tell anybody. And then I, I figure, yeah. you know, even if we go back there, Who's going to see him anyway? You know what I mean? So he didn't know. We're that not going to try to go to Dre's. So we go, I, I start yelling him on the plane. I said, bro, I can't stay there. I don't think you understand that. I can't go. He goes, 
doesn't matter. Whatever. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> my mom's like, my mom's like, no, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. So we get there. We check in. We say hi to whoever. We go up to the room. We come down. And the guy like got us the thing. He goes, yo, did you try and use a fake ID here last year? And I said, no. I said, yeah, I did. I said, yeah. Why? And he goes, and I said, let me explain. He goes, no, 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 don't explain. I know what happened. You were sick, all that stuff. I, I understand. And then my dad goes, is it really that big of a deal? He goes, yeah, yeah. he should be arrested right now. He said, Nick Nick should be in cuffs in jail with, two, with a fine you guys have to pay. Yeah. And he goes, why? And he goes, I to he goes you guys, you, I told you this, bro. Like, and I started yelling. I'm like, I told you this. I didn't I told know. You I'd been I was like, being naive. But how do you not know, bro? I told you. You were there. He read me my rights right, right in front of you. You want to hear the funny thing? My friend told me that, like, you could shoot somebody, beat somebody up, get them off. You know, serious shit like that. But in Vegas, if you play and with the liquor you license, play you're with screwed. A, like a fucking fake ID or some shit like that, they they don't fool around. It's like a serious offense. Serious offense. So, s you know, he was all upset that night. I, started I took it lightly. I didn't know. Started being an asshole. I was, wasn't an asshole. I started I being an asshole. You were being an asshole because you didn't I listen know. to me. I was like, all right, we'll get over it. And you know, you didn't commit fucking murder. You had a bullshit phony ID. You never should have tried it. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have gave in to Blake. Don't fucking blame me, Blake. <laughs> fucking blame me. That doesn't look at that thing. That thing was a joke. I was giggling at it when I saw it. You still have it? No, the guy confiscated it. Took it. I mean, I have my other one, which works really well. Very smart. Keep, keep, yeah. But, but yeah. I don't, I don't use that in Vegas. Only in LA and Seattle, maybe Chicago. So one day he's walking up. He's probably ten. He's coming back from school. He's wearing a Kobe Bryant jersey. I'm a Celtics fan. I like the stuff. And he's walking up the driveway, and I go, hey, man. And he goes, hey. I go, what do you got on? He goes, this is a Kobe Bryant jersey. I go, where'd you get that, buddy? And he goes, I wanted it at the carnival at school. And I, he started to walk up to me. I go, where are you going? He goes, I'm going in the house. I go, not with that jersey on. <laughs> I don't care who you pray to. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care who you fuck. But your sports teams, you cannot pick. And if you're in my house, you're wearing a Celtics jersey or you're in the backyard. You know what I want to do this year? I want to sit up on a monster. Let's get the best fucking Red Sox fan, celebrity Red Sox fan, whoever the fuck you are. I want to watch a Yankee game on the monster with the best Red Sox fan known to mankind. That's what I want to do. I want to film that shit. We're going to sit up there and break bread on the monster. Me and Matt Damon, whoever the fuck it is. Ben Affleck, I don't care who you are. Come out and let's do war. I got a fucked up hair right now. What's wrong with your yeah. hair? A lot of things are wrong with my hair. I was, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always in search of a good haircut because very hard to cut my hair. I can't find... A decent hair cutter. It's very hard. I've, I've had, I've gone through many bad haircuts. I've jumped up out of chairs. I've almost, you know, I've, I've ran out of shops. I had a guy one time on a movie, Takers. You know that movie? Yeah, Matt Dillon, Idris Elba. Rest, right. Rest I'm in peace, Paul Walker. Paul Walker, good yeah. movie. Good I'm movie. sitting in the hair chair, and some guy's cutting my hair. Not only was he cutting it crooked, I think he was drunk. I forget his, I don't, I, I don't know his name. Not only was he cutting it crooked, I said, I knew something was going on. Then he cut my ear. I don't know how he cut my ear. My ear was fucking bleeding. He was drunk. Yeah, he was drunk. And I saw him on a Kevin James movie. He goes, how you doing? I said, oh, you're the guy that cut my ear. You're not cutting my hair. That's it. You don't cut my hair. There's a few hair cutters like Larry Cherry who cut my hair, Jungle Fever. That's a great hair cutter. Denzel's guy. Denzel's guy. He works for Denzel. That's how good Larry Cherry is. My man, Larry Cherry. Shout out Larry Cherry. Shout him out. But he can cut hair. I don't have, I have one great guy, Alan the Barber. When Alan comes and cuts me, it's poetry. He takes two hours maybe to cut me, hour and a half, but he takes his time because he wants to please me. He wants to please. I had a brother who cut hair too, Ralph, but he took three and a half hours. He couldn't get a job. He'd be on one hair for like an hour. I'd jump up, I'd watch a movie like Ben-Hur or something. It was an all-day affair. You just put Titanic on, like a movie like that, right? Titanic, you need like a four-hour movie. You need Spartacus, you need Titanic. Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street, you can't get a job <laughs> like that. But Alan is great. He's up in the Bay Area. I found him at the KG. Anyway, KG cut my hair on Mall Cop too. I'm so ADD, gave me a good haircut. Then after a couple of weeks, I needed a, a trim, so... You got to match, you know, what? and he didn't match it. He turned the chair around. In other words, he did one of these jobs, you know, like he turned the chair. And the thing is, you can't turn the chair when you're cutting my hair. If you turn the chair, 
I can't see what you're doing. What do you, what do you like to do when you're in the chair? No, no, I have to have a mirror. I need a mirror. You got a mirror? No. Whatever, like here, here, that, that's the mirror, right? Okay, here's the mirror. So I, ha I need a mirror while you're cutting my hair, stand behind me. Right, right, you're over here. You're over there, get over there, get over there. Now it's a, so I gotta, I gotta gauge because the fade has to be low. Mm. The problem is what happens? Tell me, tell me what happens, that the fade goes too high? So, so. Now say, tell, come over here on the camera, show them like where the fade goes. Like, so if it goes too high. Turn this way. So he likes it. No, like, low, no, like, even lower, like, like real like low. Very low. Very low. Like mid low. It has to be low, and then it has to be blended. I have lots of angles, but, but because I have mixed hair. I don't have white or black hair. I have hair that's like hard to cut. And a lot of people are like, I know how to cut your hair. And I, I'm like, no, you don't. A, a, lot of bar no, you don't. a lot of barbers, they get complacent. And it's nothing against any barbers. That's just what comes with the territory. So they cut his hair once and they do it right. And then the second time, maybe they're not right. paying attention. Maybe right. they have 10 cuts that day and he's on the sixth or seventh cut. They lose their edge. They go a little too high. If you go too high on him, it's the death wish. No good. No good. Because <laughs> then a bad cut, sometimes it takes me two cuts. Sometimes it takes me three cuts to get back to what I have to get. Like right now, I need a, I need a trim. I got this one guy in Van Nuys at Left Hook, Left Hook Barbershop. Shout out Ricky Funes. Shout out, shout out Ricky Funes, good boxing trainer. He gave me a good haircut, this kid. He's like 16. He's good, but he's hard to get. Every time I call, he's like booked, he's booked, he's booked. And uh, the problem is, you know, who knows? And he's given me a couple of good haircuts so far. But the problem is they only know how to use the... They only know how the to guard. use the, the guards. They don't know how to use the scissor. You know, like in Italy, they know how to use scissors. They know how to use scissors, you know? But like a lot of them just know how to like, they taught themselves how to do that. And they do it good on the surface, but you're specific. Yeah. So, so I'm very specific. That's the problem. You got to be specific. It's just like in acting. It's just like anything. Even being a baseball fan, you got to be specific. You, otherwise, you have no point of view. You know, if, if you're not specific... Then if you're general and you have general hair, then you get a general haircut. Everything about me is specific. If my hair is right, I'm right. I feel better. I feel sexy. I'm going to bring Alan the barber in and show you what a really good haircut is. I like to sweat, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times, you know, like I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll put a lot of clothes on when I want to sweat and stuff like that. Yeah, like and, this, man. You can yeah. sweat easy. I know I'm that. sweating in this damn thing. <laughs> I'm always like, I got a lot of layers. Like usually, today I only have two layers, but sometimes I have like three, four layers. Yeah. And I don't know why, I'm just a layer guy, yeah, you know? I don't get it. I like to take my clothes <laughs> off, too. You know what I mean? I like to get naked a lot, but I mean, I also like my layers. I'm, I'm f <laughs> filled with contradiction. What kind of, every pitch is a different grip? Yeah. Um, so my four seam, I grip it like this. Now, I just learned in spring training, so you see how these seams are going this way? Yeah. So in spring training, I was just throwing, really, my whole career, I've been throwing my four seam both ways. I've right. just grabbed the ball and I know it's a four seam grip. Yeah. So I've been throwing like this and I've been throwing like this, like this. I'm never really paying attention. I just know it's a four seam. Across the seams? Yeah. Because when I when you throw across like this, you can pull down on the on the seam. So it gives it that extra life. So they call that a four seamer? That's a four seamer, yeah. And I have the seams going that way. So it just stays at a consistent plane and then it moves at the last minute. Right. Um, to be honest with you, I'm still, you know, perfecting my pitches each day. So sometimes it'll move a certain way I don't want it to. So I gotta like refine that and work on that. But it's just an everyday now thing. Now, what's of the two seam? What do they say? Yeah, the two seam is on. Is so right there. It, it depends. Anybody they can go up here. I mean, people go here, down here. I like to stay like right in here. Right. And I just keep these two fingers on the seams like this, and then like I pull down on these laces, so I get that extra friction. When it comes off my fingers. When it comes off the finger. Yeah. What do you feel more comfortable throwing, the four-seamer or the two? You know, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with my two-seamer. I had a lot more confidence with the four-seamer at one point, but now I feel like I'm just as good at both um, with the consistency and my confidence with it. But um, if what? I'm trying to get a dude out, I'm throwing the four-seamer because I like to throw. I like to elevate my pitch right. and change the you hitter's... The, the hitter's eye... Yeah, eye level, right? Eye level, yeah. right? So so it's, it's pretty cool to do that, and, you know... I throw my slider as well for an off for a, a um, out pitch, but um, my my elevated fastball has become my new favorite for my out pitch. So that's I, your yeah. that's your your money pitch, yeah, right? Exactly. When you're trying to put a guy away. Yeah, because I'll throw like a setup pitch. I'll throw a pitch before that where it looks like it's on the same plane, right. and then it'll drop off. Might be a slider or a curveball, and then I'll throw that fastball that's on the same plane, and it just keeps going, and they and they swing right through it. 
And now, do you throw a change up? Yep, change up, uh, circle change up. Circle so they change call it a circle change because, right. like, right here with the finger and the thumb, you put it together. And um, I grip it across just like, like the four seam, just like that. And damn. it comes off those two fingers. Like I said, the friction gives it that extra. That's a great like, pitch, right? Down. The change oh, up? Yeah, change up. I, I mean, that, that circle change because yeah. it's like, what do they call Bugs Bunny like kind of? Yeah, action? like that skit, yeah. Is that, what they, is, that yeah. What, is that what they say? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of dances a little, right? Yeah, but, it does. I mean, it, everybody's changing. But you different, throw it but like a fastball? Throw just, Every pitch you throw like a fastball. You got to have that deception because a hitter, especially at the big league level now in professional baseball, they see those little tendencies where if you slow your arm speed down or you slow your mechanics down, they know an off-speed pitch is coming. That quick, huh? That quick. Yeah, that's the difference between the guys that play high school, college, that don't make it to professional. They can't pick up those tendencies. And um, that's just something where I have to work on that as a pitcher because it's like, man, I'm, I'm 19 facing grown men and guys that have, that have been playing in these leagues for years now that are 24, 25, 26. And um, it's just crazy to... To, to see that competition in that level, you know? Like, I, when I came to Dayton, right. I was only 18, and the average age in that league was, like, 23. Now, that was your first year of Pro Bowl? So that was that was my second year, but that was, like, my real first year. Like, rookie ball, don't really count that, you know? It's just coming out of high school. Yes, it's, like, a pro team, but um, just the level of it. So Dayton, was that, like, single A? Dayton was single A, yeah. yeah. So that was in Dayton, Ohio, which was pretty cool because I was only like 30 minutes from downtown Cincinnati. So on off days, we can go watch the team and just hang out with the guys or, you know, go to the city and hang out. So How's that, that ballpark? That beautiful. It's, it's actually one of the best ballparks in, uh, in the minor leagues. And we had the biggest sellout record in sports history. Really? We hold that record in sports history, not just baseball, not just minor leagues, but sports history. Beautiful. So it's a special place to play. And we had an average of like eight to 9,000 people a game. We'd sell out 10, 11,000. And that was pretty much every night. I can remember like starting to actually follow boxing. And I remember one night turning on the TV and this highlight show of Tyson versus Spinks is on, you know, and they're going to fight. Right. So I just sit down and start watching. And they're going over the highlight packages of, of Tyson and Spinks, going over this fight and hyping it up. So I'm like, Wow, this is amazing. I'm a seven-year-old kid, <laughs> and I just got sucked right into this fight. And it's going to be tonight, only to find that at the end it's not on. It's going to be on close circuit, a pay-per-view, whatever. Oh, and, you know, wow. my grandparents are guineas. They're not ordering fights. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? So, so, so the next morning, my grandfather gets up, and he's got to go to the barber. So he takes me. I go my grand, hold my grandfather's hand, and we walk to 18th Avenue, a few blocks away. And when the barber shop is there, guys are talking in Sicilian, you know, all this stuff. With all the newspapers in there, the Italian papers, the American papers. And I pick up the Daily News, the back page is Spinks on the canvas. And it says, like, something to the degree of Tyson blows out Spinks in 89 seconds. 90 like seconds, that. yeah. That's my first boxing memory. I didn't even get to watch the fight. Wow. <laughs> so when did you become a pro? How old were you? Late. Late? Uh, 28. 28 years old. So you were fighting in Holland? I was uh, a Thai boxer in Holland. Thai I boxer for how many years? Uh, I did it like four years, and I made a comeback one time after f after three years of partying and being crazy. A, a comeback that I even didn't know that I said yes to because I was drunk when I said yes to the fight. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and when the promoter called me to where to send the posters, I said, what well, poster for the fight? I said, who's fighting? You. I said, who am I fighting? Frank Lopman. Frank Lopman, the animal? That was his nickname. <laughs> he just came out of prison. It was like 43 and 0 with uh, like 39 knockouts. The animal, right? So I said, okay, so, uh, well, when did I say that? He goes, but New Year's. I said, New Year's, yeah. Hmm. I said, oh, yeah. I, re I remember talking to the guy. Well, you know, I'm a man of my own word. Right. If I said yes, okay, I'll do it. When is the fight? I go, two and a half weeks. <laughs> and I go. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, well, they put me on the post. I'm going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was not a fun fight for me. You know, it wasn't a fun uh, fight. No, it wasn't a fun fight. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah, the whole bunch happened. I didn't get knocked out. They thought it was hit, but you can see the video. It's not. It was just my leg didn't work anymore. I had this big hole in my shin from a stupid trick that I did, jumping on an, on a wall, and then I slipped off, and my shin bone fell on the and it ripped my whole sh uh, skin on my sk uh, shin. So I had that. It was all stitched up. I had to cover it with makeup, otherwise they wouldn't let me fight. But my my leg was hurting, and I was afraid in the back of your head. You go like, what if I kick with it? It opens up. You know, maybe is this gonna affect me? So I said, hey, just put some lidocaine shots around it so I don't feel the thing, and I'm going. And the guy says to me, and he right. said, no, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll put it in your butt here on the butt cheek, and that will that will numb the whole leg a little bit more for you. And if you look me in the fight, you will. I'm always standing still when I fight. That fight, I'm constantly shaking my leg, shaking my leg at what's going on. I had no control over my leg. I think he came very close to a nerve or something that numbed it, and it was I was very weird. My leg didn't feel like my leg, and there was a lot of focus on that. And when I fell, 
I simply couldn't get up. And I look at my trainer, I say, listen, my leg, it's, it's not working for me. So I had to stop that fight. Didn't really, really look good for me. Listen, eventually I was going to lose this fight anyway. I'm, I'm not saying I was going to win because this guy was like his nickname. He's an animal. He's an animal. Right, right. So I, I yeah. was going to lose for sure. But you know, that, that's when everybody spit me out. Suddenly all the knockouts that I had before, I won only by knockout. They forgot about everything. Suddenly I was the worst fighter on the planet. And After that loss. After that one loss. You what know. was your record before that? What were you like? Uh, I think 14. 14, 14 and, and oh. Yeah. Uh, no, 12 and 0 at that time. So then what were they trying to say? That you were overrated or what, whatever? Yeah, that's, you know, that's how people This are. was in Holland? That was in Holland. Yeah. So that's when I promised myself never to fight for the Dutch people anymore. Because if they were like that, you know, I'm... Right. How can you win? Uh, but I wanted to do something. And then I had my, my, my Taekwondo teacher, karate teacher, we started doing these martial arts shows. Right. Uh, like choreographed martial arts shows in a nightclub. At midnight, close down, mm -hmm. suddenly the, the floor gets open, and we come in in our freaking spandex and pumped up muscles, <laughs> and we start doing these high-pitched uh, with, with nunchucks, with breaking tests, boards kicking, kicking cigarettes out of the mouth, spinning back kicks, big back flips and somersaults and all that kind of stuff, long sticks, short sticks. I mean, a cool show right. on music, right? You know, fight. Yeah. <laughs> with music? With music. And that's suddenly we start doing that at events, like Thai boxing events in the break. Right. And suddenly TV came, and then we started traveling. European TV came, Dutch TV, and we you can you f can find those clips on uh, on YouTube. Really? We just mess around with martial arts. We start making comedy, comedy martial arts, and it became very funny. And but on one of those shows, Chris Dolman, who is like the godfather of mixed martial arts in Holland, um, he saw me come up with backflips and somersaults. And he remembered me from Thai boxing, so he stopped me after the show. He said, dude, that was crazy. Uh, did you ever think about free fighting? I go, what do you mean? He says, free fighting. They do that in Japan. That's what they called mixed martial arts at the time. Right. Would you like to try? So he explained to me all the rules. Was that I basically go, like the U.S.? Uh, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, it was MMA. Free fighting. It was in 93. It was before the UFC, September 93. You know, the first UFC show was uh, November. So the free fighting came about. And then what did that make you? That's when you became a star, kind of. Uh, yeah, did he yeah. just asked me one day? He called me, and it was a new organization, Pancras. It was the organization I fought for in Japan. They were look, they were scouting, and he asked me to come. And I went over there, and I got in a scuffle with one of his champions from a different organization, from the organization Rings. And uh, the guy, because he wanted to film our technique, and the guy oh. started going really hard. So I told him, I said, "Dude, we don't have to go out. They just want to show technique. Right. Yeah, relax." And then he turned it up. So I go, I stop him again. I said, "We don't need to do it." But if you want to, we can. Yeah, it's going to be not be one one way traffic, right. you know. Right. But we don't need to do this now. Of course, it was on, uh, not long because who my, was this my guy? right hiking landed. <laughs> <laughs> so who was this guy? Yeah, I don't say his name. You don't want to say went, his name. So right. He went down. Cool. Uh, his high was all the way open. Needed stitches, and that's where I saw Fudaki Suzuki. They were pointing at me to go like, "We want him," and that was it. I think six weeks later, I was in uh, in Japan fighting. Wow. So Rocky one, Rocky two, right? I mean, it's how do you separate them? They're great. They're both great. What Lords about my prime, Mick? What about my prime? Yeah. At least you had a prime. How many times did you see it in the movie theater? Twenty. In Twenty something. Theater? My mom would drop me off. And then what? I, I, Legs ain't working. Nothing's working. 13, no one's doing third, nothing. You taught me. Guy comes around, gives huh. me the big fight, big, big deal. deal. Want to fight the big fight? Right. Who's gonna fight that fight? I'll right. fight that fight. Fight the fight. Get my face kicked in. Right. You, you want to be there ringside seat? Mike, get it, Mike, give it. Do you? Go ahead. It stinks. Whole place. This whole place stinks. Right. Talk about your prime. What about my prime? Legs ain't working, nothing's working. Because right. he says it twice. He says it twice. He goes back. Yeah. He's great. He's wonderful. He He's... said that they did one take of that. That's one take. I believe that. Uh, for him to get there, you know what I mean? He ain't going to be able to do that. He's not like De Niro that could do 300 takes. Yo, when it comes to Rocky... He goes in the pocket. I know. I cried at fucking Creed too. Cried. Uh, it is okay. I like the first one better. But when he's on the screen, he's great. I mean, listen, he's listen. Great. When he's with <laughs> him know. and he's talking that shit, I know. He's like, he's a killer. I mean, he, and he, and he just, it's, and like he, and like he's like all like when yeah. he's giving him advice. I, I, I was in I there crying. Him. I love. I him. cried at Creed too. I literally. Does he know how much you love him? I told him. When I did Copland, I got to tell him everything. We would do lines together. You did? We would do, I would do his lines, he would do Mickey lines. Oh my, so he did Mick's lines? I would do his lines and he would do the other oh person's lines. Oh my God, lines. that must have been. I was like, what the, f if it had been Instagram back then, we would have broken the internet. Well, then you've got that going with Danny now, because you've become, a, you know, you with love Aiello. Danny. And he loves you. But with Stallone doing lines from Rocky. Yeah, that's legendary. I was. 
literally like what the fuck? So he was playing Mickey. What scene did I you do? I do anything. The whole we did all the we did movie. one through five. You know the whole movie, right? Every scene, every question, every reference. Did you know Rocky? Did you know Rocky two by heart too? Yes. Wow. Yes. Holy shit! Twenty times. 20 or 22? How many times? Do you remember? I have to ask my mom. 20 something. So you'd go like right after she, school? Yeah, she dropped me off. Four o'clock. There's nobody in the theater. I go see it two times. Yeah, two times. Go on the weekend again. Did you get up during the fight and cheer? Everything. Yeah. I was out of my mind. <laughs> and that movie was something else. Nothing like an afro, bro. Yeah. Sexiest and thing you, alive. And you were in New York. I had an afro. It was a fake perm. No, it wasn't. Bullshit. Fuck you. Did you ever grow an afro good? Yeah, I had a real good afro. Show my high school fucking senior Let picture. Let me see your hair. My hair's not as fucking... No, but when you grow it out, you have good hair. Oh, I have good hair. You can pull yeah, no, it's pull it's it. good. Pull it's it. good. It's good. See, I like everything pulled on me. Everything pinched. I don't want to do that to you, Nick. I don't want to do it to you, Nick. Can I pull your hair? No, no, no. Huh? You can rub me. All right. <laughs> Nick, I'm so happy for you oh, breaking bread. great. 